I hope everybody can see that. So basically this was a microarray study uh, that was done, published 12 years ago. <clears throat> and we examined 25 uh, CFS ME patients and 50 normal controls matched two to one for age, sex and geographical location. They were all adults. And um, we found 88 human genes. And this was published in 2008. One of these was EBI2. And this is Epstein-Barr virus induced gene two. And the fold difference, oh, sorry. The fold difference uh, in the microarray study was 1.3 raised in MECFS, and by RT-PCR was 3.44. And this is the interesting figure. You can see that the um, levels in normal controls uh, this is for two genes, by the way, uh, EBI2 with the, the O, um, or almost, uh, and the neuropathy target esterase with the asterisk, but you can ignore that. So basically EBI2 uh, shows very low levels across all these normal blood donors. And in uh, approximately 50% of the MECFS patients, it was uh, raised, and markedly so. And this is highly significant. So when we look at the clinical information, this was a, a, another study in which we uh, added more uh, gene data generated by RT-PCR. Um, and there were 108 subjects in this. Um, and this is the SF36 score. Subtype D was the most severely affected. And that showed the highest uh, expression levels of EBI2 and another nine uh, EBV-associated human genes. And it's actually more today. There's about double that number uh, because with the years, uh, more is known about each of these uh, originally reported genes. So we looked at uh, EBV antibodies, uh, the usual EBV antibody markers used in diagnosis. Um, uh, the interesting one, this is the, uh, there were eight different subtypes found uh, by clustering of this gene expression data. And they're shown here, and then we have the normal group. So subtype D shows a markedly low, uh, lower than uh, the other groups and much lower than normal level of EBNA IgG, uh, Epstein-Barr virus nuclear antigen IgG. And this appears in a normal person at two to three months and is involved in uh, control of the virus. Uh, EBNA is a, an oncogene which is expressed in all the latent phases of infection and um, it, it is uh, involved in cancer obviously. So I hope you can make this out, but uh, EBI2 is a human gene, a G protein coupled receptor, uh, which is a transmembrane protein sitting in the cell membrane, also called G GPR183. And at the time we published this, uh, all that was known about it was that there was a greater than 200 fold increase in EBV infected Burkitt lymphoma cells. Um, it's subsequently been shown to be highly expressed in PBMC, uh, B cells, T cells, NK cells, monocytes, and neutrophils uh, during EBV reactivation. It's a regulator of B cell partitioning in lymphoid tissues, and I'll show you a bit more about that. It's critical for T cell mediated antibody responses and inflammation. Uh, the ligands for this uh, receptor are oxysterols and particular, particularly 7-alpha-25-dihydroxy cholesterol. And binding of the ligand leads to a reduction of cyclic AMP via the G protein alpha and activation of the ERK pathway, which is involved in cancer. Uh, EBI2 is important in brain and immune function, which is a perfect fit for MECFS. Uh, and upregulated EBI2 
occurs in various uh, cancers and autoimmune diseases. But at this moment, we don't understand what it does for the virus, why, why it upregulates. So EBI2 potentiates B cell mediated immune responses and is absolutely required for that. So here we have a schematic of a germinal center in a lymph node or the spleen showing proliferation and development of B cells. So uh, naive B cells enter here and move progressively towards the T cell zone where they associate with T cells and dendritic cells and then plasma cells uh, and memory B cells emerge. So this is absolutely required for class switching. And at the top, I've drawn this triangle to illustrate that there's a, a 7-alpha 25-dihydroxy cholesterol gradient across the germinal center, uh, which, and basically what uh, this does is it, it uh, facilitates migration of B cells from here to the T cell zone. Um, and that is basically what it does in cells. The oxysterol gradient and the EBI2 uh, work together to uh, facilitate migration. So because we found this in 50% approximately of MECFS patients, it seemed to me that, and, and it is involved in uh, antibody responses, Variable EBI2 expression may explain inconsistently reported immune phenomena in MECFS. And this is a, a some of the abnormalities found. So uh, the TH2 profile of T helper cell responsiveness was uh, reported a, a long time ago. Deficiency in antibody mediated cellular cytotoxicity and various deficiencies in particular IgG subsets. So these are inconsistently reported and variable EBI2 expression may explain that. So the markers of EBV associated MECFS or uh, have variously been reported uh, antibody to DNA polymerase, antibody to DUTPase by Lerner et al. The DUTPase, which is a product uh, of EBV reactivation and can be produced with incomplete EBV reactivation. And these were the publications of the um, Ronald Glazer's group in Ohio. And then EBI2. So this gene is, is implicated in these diseases. Uh, EBV infection, melanoma metastasis, glioblastoma, bone carcinoma metastasis, SLE, type 1 diabetes, and the work you've seen, MECFS. It's also actually been implicated in asthma in 2017. Oxysterols, the ligands for the EBI2, have been implicated in multiple sclerosis and experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, uh, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, motor neuron disease, and various other uh, diseases including atherosclerosis and inflammatory bowel disease. This is very difficult to see, but um, there are numerous uh, inhibitors of EB rea EBV reactivation in the literature, and I summarized these last year. So these consist of um, anti herpes virus drugs, um, other drugs like cimetidine, which inhibits. TH1 suppressor cells and thus potentiates the cytotoxic response, um, nutritional supplements and vitamins. So the work was funded by the CFS Research Foundation. Thank you.